we go. So, chest day outfit. Certainly kind of funny. I've never really been one to, well, honestly, I don't mind wearing, <laughs> wearing fucking whatever to the gym. As long as it's comfortable. You know, I wouldn't really, I'm not going to wear jeans. But, honestly, it's just kind of funny wearing the fucking, uh, wearing the Hawaiian shirt. Plus, <laughs> it does become a little easier for me with the pump, uh, the pump reveal, just to take off uh, a button-up shirt rather than pull one all the way off my body. So it's not just for looks; it's also for utility. But I got a scoop of bloodshot and hostility. I would have, I think, I left the watermelon one at home, so this is like a watermelon peach kind of combination. I mean, for those curious, that's the pre I've been doing for months. So we'll see if this uh, this pump at the end of this chest workout is, uh, well, obviously I know it's going to be good. That's not even a question. Oh, fuck. I'm dripping all over the fucking place. But yeah, so chest 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 uh plan oh fuck dude i fucking ran some i must have like drove over some uh grass or something because my car is dragging a piece of plastic on like the engine cover oh, every time i stop at like a stoplight or anything i feel so fucking embarrassed I gotta get under there and fix that later. I, uh, I wonder if you can hear it. But what, whatever, who gives a fuck? It's not gonna affect the pump. So the chest lift is gonna consist of primarily heavy pressing in the beginning. Uh, let's think what else. Oh, yeah, heavy pressing, probably, probably incline barbell if I had to guess, but yeah. Potentially inclined Smith. I'm a little bit torn because the Smith machine at this gym isn't awesome. It's not my favorite. Honestly, I really like the old school ones where it's um Oh, it sounds so bad for me. I'm not sure. You won't be able to hear whatever. Uh but the incline uh well the Smith machines that I like the most are pretty much the most bare bones kind of older ones where they don't have any counterweights or anything fancy like that so you know when you get on a smith machine you can kind of throw the bar up in the air and it just kind of floats and then comes back down that's because the machine itself on the inside of it, it's got counterweights so instead of the 45 pound bar being 45 pounds it's more like 20 it's uh, whatever but i like the older ones where it really just feels like you're holding onto a fucking barbell but the movement path is what's being constrained so it gets a little bit easier to do some force reps because for me, when I do a set of incline barbell bench, you know, I can push it pretty fucking hard, but I can't really do partials. Just by the nature of it being like a compound movement like that, you can't really do much in terms of partials because, well, unless you've got a pretty strong spotter, how the fuck are you gonna get the thing off your chest? Whereas, I'm not even concerned about throwing the safety pins up on a Smith machine when I'm doing an incline bench. Just because I can always, well, for the most part, sure, it, if it's even stuck on my chest, I can always just kind of puff out my chest and push it up to one notch and then lock it in. Perhaps not the exact safest method, but honestly, I don't feel, I've never felt any kind of danger on a Smith machine, apart from just the normal amount of danger you get when you're lifting weights. But after a couple sets of heavy pressing, uh, maybe I'll move on to an incline machine press that I like that they have here. It's not my favorite, you know, it's not the same as a hammer strength press, but it's pretty good. And I thought I'll just finish with flies. Uh, I was about to say pec deck, but honestly, the pec deck, the stack just isn't heavy enough, and I can't add more weight. Uh, and it's not because I don't have like a gym pen or anything, but the pec deck, just the way that it's built, I can't slap a 45 on the side because the weight like stack is sort of recessed behind some plastic so 
if the if the stack on peck deck is too light for you you can understand my troubles my struggles but i'll probably just end up doing cable flies at the end of the lift i'm not really even well i guess i am concerned about the weight because i do want to go heavy but that's not the point that's not the point of those last like let's say three or four sets for me on chest because those sets of flies i'm really just trying to get a crazy burn but even before that, I'm just trying to pump up my fucking chest with as much blood as possible. Because I've done, well, honestly, I probably do the most damage to my chest with the heavy pressing, right? When I have a ton of tension on the muscle. And then, once all that's kind of been done, this is in a very bro science kind of, kind of a, you know, analyzation. But once all that heavy damage is done from the, you know, the high weights, the high tension, where you're really pushing yourself 8 to 12 reps like to legitimate failure around there then i'm just trying to fill the blood with uh fill the muscle with blood i go check the pump for me that formula seems to be pretty much the best way to go about it you know, not power lifting not like five by five but also not just lightweight perfect execution reps either just a little bit of a combination of the two, plus some, plus some Tom Platt's intensity, as it were. But uh, enough, enough chatting. Let's uh, let's just get in there. All right. So I've spent a little while warming up, and as I'm sure you've noticed, if you if you've watched these for more than a couple of weeks, I haven't done incline dumbbell. Now, partially, that's because um, a couple of months ago. When I did incline dumbbell, I went extra heavy. I tried doing the 175s, and uh, I like re-pulled my chest a little bit, so I backed off. But you know, I just did like a pretty, pretty extensive cable warm up. You know, some tricep pushdowns, some pretty much like base pulls, rotator cuff work, then some pretty much just cable presses. Then I did the one. Uh, so after a couple sets of that, I was ready to bench the hundreds. So I did a set with the hundreds, set with the 130s, set with the 150s. And the one pistons are feeling light. Now, it's going to be a hard set, but I think I'm going to get in the range of like probably 20 reps or so. Obviously, I'm not pausing and like getting as deep as humanly possible. I'm just going through the range of motion that I like. But I'm going to get hyped up and throw these fuckers around. Simple. Whoa. You're going to reach a point where it's probably just safer to throw the weight down and try to re-rack in a controlled manner. I think 150s fits that criteria well. That lad. One more.
Let's move on to machine press. I haven't really done any drop sets yet, and I'm not going to this set either. This is just going to be a straight set of, you know, in front of the body cable flies. And I said this before, but instead of like standing in front of the cables, I mean, sure, you can probably get a solid stretch at the bottom. Usually I like to take, like if I'm in line with them, one step back, just so that I have the most amount of tension in the squeeze position, if you get what I'm saying. I, I'd, I'd try both of them out, and whichever one you like, just do that. But either way, let's uh, burn out. <laughs> this one I'll do bent forward. So instead of going up here, I'm going to bend over and go down here. <laughs> Yeah, doing those dumbbells after not doing it for a while, that did some damage. One more, and then we can go check the fucking pump. I can already tell it's freaky as fuck. Chest has been sufficiently pumped. Let's go check it out. There we go. The lighting could actually be better right now, but they put like child safety locks and the light switches all around this gym since I've been here. Uh, I guess this gym doesn't want you to fucking look freaky. Not, not ideal for me, but what are you gonna do? You know, honestly, trying to find the best lighting is kind of a cop out. We should try to just get so bad you look crazy in any sort of light. But, solid ass fucking chest day. I can definitely tell I felt stronger on this one because I was better rested, better fed, better hydrated. That's, uh, I didn't really plan that, but that's kind of my fucking three tenets of a good lift. If you're well rested and well hydrated, and that doesn't just mean water, that means electrolytes as well. And, did I say bad and re rested, fed, hydrated? You're gonna have a good lift. And if any of those things are missing, guess what? You're probably fucking uh, gonna be in a compromised state. All right. So, whew. Fucking freaky. Let's, uh, let's get a better look at this thing. Ooh. Mm.
Holy shit, dude. This is a fucking sick ass pump. As predicted. What else is there? There's not really a lot of poses for chests. Well, there's not a lot of poses that just make your chest look extra freaky. Apart from, you know, side chest, most muscular. For me, so how you can kind of gauge proportion is whether or not something looks out of whack when it's pumped up. So for me, in a front lat spread, when I have a chest pump, my chest definitely kind of overpowers the lats. So chest isn't too far behind. It's when it's pumped up, it's a little bit ahead. At least, you know, in my opinion. And for me, when I have a tricep pump, that's when I feel like they look good. Well, not good, of course they look good, but that's when I feel like they're in proportion. Like when I do a front lat spread and my triceps are extra pumped up, right, I just like that ratio. Or when I do like a, you know, double bicep, I think the tries are lacking. I've talked about this before. And then for me, shoulders are pretty much all right. They get enough activation just from inadvertent use. Like if you do a set of curls, just the fact that the weight is in front of your body means that your shoulder is getting some work, right? And then rowing, you get some rear delts. Every so often I'll do a little bit of a trice or a, a shoulder workout, but you know, you should really try to prioritize your lacking muscles. For me, none of them are too far behind that I have to like change my split to accommodate for it. But like, let's say you've got no fucking chest, zero chest. You're, you've been listening for a little while, your arms are looking pretty big, your shoulders are good, your back is pretty wide, but your chest is fucking flat as fuck. Maybe hit your chest a little bit more frequently. Now that's not to say that frequency is the answer. Just to, like if you go in and do a chest workout every day, your chest is not gonna grow any more substantially than if you hit it twice a week. But I think there's something to be said about hitting something more frequently. I'd say three times a week is probably the max. Twice a week is about normal. And that's, that's for all lifters, that's everybody. So once I'm like mad shredded, cause I can still grab onto a little bit of stuff. Obviously not like that much. Obviously I can still see my abs, but there starts to get some freaky shit going on in this area. You know, like fucking, these will start coming out like crazy. I'll get a little bit of ab veins. That's something to look forward to in the near future. So let's see if I can put this fucking shirt on while it's still sweaty. And uh, we can get in the fucking car and slam the cluster dextrin shake. Nothing else to fucking say, goddammit. So I've been hinting at it for a while. I keep talking about the diving. I mean, you've seen the pictures when I was like in high school, you know, 160 pounds. That's a little bit different. So obviously I'm fucking wet. I didn't wear the hat during the flips. It actually comes off, but you get the idea with the mic. But let's, uh, let's do a little bit of a demonstration, as it were. See if my... Uh, See if my bodybuilding training has translated to any extra athleticism. So, keeping with the theme of all of these lifting videos, no matter what, no matter what the fuck I do, we've got to do the post, you know, blank, pose down. Ugh. Does this look like the frame that could do a two and a half pike? on the one meter? Certainly not. Oh. It probably, it does look like the frame that could do a solid can opener though, I'll give you that. So I'm not sure whether or not I'll put this before. Oh wait, no, back to old by what I'm talking about. I'm not sure if I'll put this before the, um, before the car talk or after the car talk. But, you know, if I, if I ever do a little bit of a little, uh, let's just call it an extracurricular, 
I'm not gonna, it's not like I'm gonna make that a vlog video. I think I might just add it to the end of the lift. Cause you know, I'm not a fucking, no matter, no matter what video I post, it's always gonna have a lift in it. You can guarantee it. Well, no, I can guarantee it. So I, by the time you see this, I will have just finished my chest workout tonight. So uh, listen to me in the future, describe how sick of a pump that was. Yeah, that freaking chest day was night and day compared to the previous one. Because last chest day, dude, I did not eat enough fucking food, did not drink enough water, and did not sleep enough. I was in a very not ideal state, whereas today was much better. So obviously I'm going to go hard no matter how I feel, just because I freaking I got that dog in me, as it were. But I much prefer... Go so I definitely prefer going to the gym when it feels good. right? I want to go to the gym when I'm well-rested, when I'm well-fed, well-hydrated. Well, I guess in a cutting context, in a, I'm not going to be well-fed, but well-rested and hydrated state, so I can have a good lift. But if those criteria aren't met, I'm still going to go on anyway. Because it's still going to be good for me for the most part. Now, sometimes, like, let's say I got zero hours of sleep for some reason. You know, maybe it would be objectively beneficial for me to not go. But, you know, that's, uh, you, you got to do whatever you got to do. I think people take rest days a little too seriously. But that's, um, yeah, that's not a statement based upon facts and studies. That's just my fucking opinion. So... Cluster dextrin down the freaking hatch, and then we can roll. Ugh, I gotta wash this. Uh, the shaker still has stuff on the lid. I didn't wash the lid last time. Well, I didn't open up the lid and like get up. You get what I'm saying? You know about shaker cups. God damn it. Who doesn't love a protein shake slam at the end of the lift? As I've said before, the important part isn't the protein. That's just because in a bodybuilding context, you want some protein throughout the day. Just spread it around. There's no, there's really not no benefit in like protein timing. You're just going to want to have it evenly dispersed throughout the day. But the carbs post-workout, that's good for you. You got to replenish. Oh, fuck. Every time I start the car, I got to restart the video. God damn it. Let's wait until it cuts out automatically from joining the Bluetooth and starting to play music. How long do I have? Five. Four. There we go. Whoops. Yeah, so holy crap. Look at that fucking crazy flip. What do you think of that? Whoa. Yeah, we still got it. You know, I thought I was going to try... So that wasn't the only one that I did. We were, uh, me and uh, me and this guy Aaron were kind of just jumping around in there for a little while. But you know, it's kind of weird recording in the pool. There was a bunch of people walking around, so just got a couple of them. Well, actually, no, there wasn't a lot of bunch of people walking around, but it's just kind of weird recording myself doing those. But there were no smacks. You know, don't worry, I didn't try to hide any bales from you. But yeah, still got it. There was, a, there was no chance I was going to do a three and a half. I was, uh, I was thinking about it. So I was doing like two and a halfs where you, instead of grabbing your legs straight, you know, you grab your shins and like you sort of turn into a ball, like a tuck. There's no chance. That's more of a 200 pounder move. But definitely still got a little bit of athleticism going. And it's more of a skill thing. You know, once you learn it, you just don't forget it, for the most part. I, I wasn't worried, but I was kind of hoping that the board would dip into the water a little more from being so heavy. But not today. So the plan now is go get some groceries. I'm uh, probably going to get a steak of some sort. Going to get some Kroger sushi, I'm sure. Some more milk. We've got a bunch of cereal and ramen and... Um, Instant rice, so I'm 
pretty good on carbs. Uh, what else? Maybe some fucking, uh, I don't know. I guess I'll figure it out. I don't really have a grocery list. I just kind of go in and get whatever I want to eat under the pretense of you know, aiming towards hitting my macros, you know, my nutrition goals. My goal in a bulking context is to be full as fuck of carbs, hit my protein. Uh, you got to hit your protein all year round, obviously, bulking or cutting. Uh, and then, you know, a couple, uh, probably, yeah, 100, 150 grams of fat. There's probably no need to go any higher than that. It's just, um, you'd get no benefit, in my opinion. It's uh, not a dietitian, but blah, blah, blah. we'll get more. I'll talk about the diet more so once I actually start trimming down or want to do the full day of eating video again. Uh, because my diet changes dramatically when I try to diet down. Because I ha I would have no I'd have no desire to want to eat like a fucking bag of Skittles when I'm dieting, even if it fits my macros, just because that's 50 grams of carbs which is not going to make me feel full at all. If anything, it'll probably make me feel hungrier from just like blowing my, or like spiking my blood sugar and then having to crash later. So, you know, when I'm dieting, I'm eating a much more calorie, uh, or much less calorie dense foods, right? I would rather eat, you know, three rice cakes with some, with a slice of, like American cheese on top of it melted in the toaster, rather than, uh, I don't know what the caloric equivalent of that is, of like ice cream or something. You know, you basically you get the idea. Because the name of the game with dieting, if you want to actually stick to a calorie deficit and not be fucking starving at the end of your night, and then go to the freezer and start scooping out ice cream, is, you know, being satiated, right? You're Steve. And in a dieting context, you want to eat food that keeps your hunger bar maxed out. Get it? So that's going to be, uh, what the fuck is that guy doing? You know, that's going to be shit that's not calorie dense, you know. My favorite shit, uh, well, I wouldn't say my favorite, obviously, I make it into things, but one of my favorite um, methods of making food that, you know, isn't very calorie dense is keto bread. That is the shit. Uh, you you kind of have to search out, like, look for it in the, you know, the bakery section or wherever the fuck you get your food from. But you can get these keto buns or, like, keto hot dog, keto bagels, whatever the fuck you're looking for. And it's made primarily with um, insoluble fiber, right? In all sorts of food, you know, you hear the fucking phrase, you know, your fiber, everyone needs some fiber or whatever. So the logic is it is carbs, right? It is technically carbs on a scientific microscopic level, but insoluble fiber means that your body can't break it down. So sure, one of these little keto buns, like a little hamburger bun, it's gonna say it's got 20 grams of carbs, but it'll have like 16 grams, oh my goodness, of insoluble fiber. So that insoluble fiber, those carbs don't count. So really you're just looking at fucking four grams of carbs. Now of course it's gonna have fats and a little bit of like protein. I never count the protein from like breads or you know non-dedicated protein sources because it's not complete, you know. There's your uh, your fucking amino acid array. Everybody's heard of aminos. You've heard of branch chain amino acids and essential amino acids. Like, something like a steak, or chicken, or fish, meats, they have fucking everything you need for a complete protein. You know, pretty much all, any animal product is going to be good. Eggs, perfect. Uh, milk, even though it, milk ends up being a controversial subject. You know, fucking animal products, that protein is going to be good for you. That gets plugged into the stupid simple macro tracker. But if I look at a fucking, uh, uh, like if I make, if I'm making a little turkey wrap and I throw down a, a keto tortilla and it says it has five grams of protein in it, I just don't fucking count that shit. You know, I'm not saying that's the way to do it. I'm just telling you that's how I do it. But I'll get into that more so later.
You don't want some actually die. Which is soon. You guys should be at the edge of your seats. Well, for that. Honestly, for me, dieting is a much easier... It's a much, um... A much less energy-intensive state. Right? Everybody's going to have preferences on whether they like to be... Well, let's say you're bulking or cutting. You're going to like bulking more or cutting more. Just from just the nature of being human, you're going to prefer one or the other. Now, they both have benefits and they both have drawbacks. You know, when you're bulked up, you don't have to worry about being hungry. But... You're probably going to have to eat when you're not really hungry, which is a little bit uncomfortable. Because you you literally, are, you're just going against your body's like Your body's telling you, okay, you're good. You don't need anything. And you're overriding that. So it kind of comes a little bit of a hassle there. I mean, you shouldn't be like force feeding like absolute crazy. You should be eating enough to be in a calorie surplus such that your weight gradually increases week by week. But then it's just so much food, man. You know, you got to be eating all the fucking time. So once I start trimming down, eh, it's going to be nice because I won't have to worry about making a bunch of fucking food or you know, hitting my calories before I go to bed. I kind of just get to chill and train. That's the end of it. Now, I'm still training hard, of course, and I'm still I'm still hitting my protein and whatnot. But I'd say just in like a just just like an overall scale of enjoyment. I like trimming down more, just in day-to-day -day life. But in the gym, I definitely like being bulked up. Moving around a lot of weight, insane pumps. You're growing, literally making fucking progress. It's, uh, you gotta take one with the other. The, I think a lot of lifters, maybe not so much now, people are starting to kind of embody the idea of actually wanting to build a solid baseline physique before they start trying to just cut down. But... I think a lot of people, if they are totally new to the gym, and they're maybe a little bit, maybe they have a body fat percentage that's higher than they would like, their instant move is to diet, cut down. Uh, but they haven't really built any fucking muscle yet underneath. You know, you gotta build a solid frame first before you should, you know, really consider trying to cut down. Now, if you're going from just non-lifter to lifter, fuck man, just... Honestly, just starting to eat your protein, like hitting your protein every day, gram per pound of body weight, you know, from shakes or eating extra protein from you know, more, you know, getting, making a, a, a really thick fucking turkey sandwich or having your eggs in the morning, you know, whatever, and then adding training consistently, weight training into your routine. After a couple of months, you're just going to fucking look completely different. So, you know, there's benefits to trying to optimize everything. When it comes to lifting, if that's your goal, right? if, if you want more muscle, more uh, more strength, more everything, whatever. But you know that also kind of comes with time and, and, uh, and experience. You know, the uh, the beginner could definitely be overwhelmed if I started telling him, like if I just <laughs> did stream of consciousness, consciousness, just told a, a guy who's never lifted before how to do it, and I just rambled on and on and on for like <laughs> I don't know how long I could talk about it for a while. It's just going to be so fucking overwhelming. Basic thing, uh, or basic tip for any complete noob. Well, I, I don't know, just watch some... Look up a Jeff Nipper push-pull leg split video on how to train. Maybe watch some Athlean X clips. It's just to you know, get a little bit of information about how to do movements. I know he, that's like his whole deal. Don't read into it too much, but you know, learn the basics. And then just fucking go to the gym. Just get in there, get comfortable, start lifting. Best case scenario, you got a little buddy with you who's been lifting for a couple of years, and you have him take you under his wing. That's uh, that's what happened to me. That's what happens to everybody. You're a real freak. I tell you what, you're a real freak if you just go to the gym out of nowhere with nobody helping you out. And I'm saying that as a compliment. So, you know, if that's you, if you don't have a dude who's like, if you don't have somebody who can, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Uh not indoctrinate or if that's the word I'm not sure but if you don't have a dude to fucking show you the ropes uh, but you you are interested you get the fucking internet man this is crazy unlimited information you just kind of have to have the uh, you gotta have the desire to sort of sift through it and try not to get um, try not to get discouraged there we go there we freaking go Hmm. So, 
That's it. We're done. I'm gonna go to go to Kroger, get groceries, go home, and uh, set up my computer and shit. It took me forever to get my Wi-Fi started. Spectrum, more like Spectrum Wi-Fi, more like Spectrum Puzzle. Plugging all sorts of shit in and stuff, but finally got it working. So uh, yeah, that's all I got, yo. Solid pump. A little bit of acrobatics for you as a treat. What else can you ask for? Cardio in the morning. Hopefully you do it. I'll fucking see you before back tomorrow.